Choosing Home by Ginny Rules 27, Chapter 49. Before I get started, the Freddy mentioned in this is Freddy Facilier. Freddy sat on her bed, perusing a book she had found in the library at Oradon Prep. It was honestly strange to think about the fact that she was here, in Oradon, rather than on the aisle. How do the others handle it? The knowledge that we're free from the barrier but we'll never get to see our parents again. She thought with a small sigh. It must have been easier for her sisters. They got friends to pal around with and talk about their insecurities. She was by herself. Oh, sure, she knew she had her family. Oma had been quick to introduce her and Celia to their grandmother, who made probably the best gombo this side of the bridge. Freddy hadn't had the chance, or heart if she was honest, to go to Tiana's restaurant to see how her gombo compared. Oh, Freddy, there you are. Freddy looked up from her book as she heard the familiar, feminine, English-accented voice coming from her doorway. Her heart flipped as she saw Ali in her usual blue and white dress, leaning against the doorframe, smiling as she looked at Freddy. Her blonde hair was pushed back by her typical black headband that oddly enough seemed to work for her. Black seemed out of place on all of the Oradon kids, but with Ali, it seemed as natural as Freddy's multicoloured outfits. Everyone's going to the Enchanted Lake to go swim. Aren't you going? Ali asked. Oh, Freddy said. I, um, I didn't realise everyone was going. I'm really not used to the sun and the heat, so I think I'll stay back. What a pity. I was going to go, but I wouldn't want you to be by your lonesome, Ali said as she walked into the room, sitting down beside Freddy. If she noticed Freddy's sharp intake of breath at the decision, Ali didn't let on. I wonder if Bernie Boy had just declared one e a k needed to adopt a VK. Freddy thought, That Miguel boy is with Jude, Brendan's with Quinn, and Makari is with Gil, who's yet to tell us how all that happened. And apparently the youngest of the Fitzherbert brood is very friendly with the ringmaster's daughter. Mulan's daughter is with Jay, Fairy Godmother's daughter's with Deville, Dwarf boy's with Blueberry, sorry, Evie, God, it's weird to call her by her first name. And of course, Benny boys with Mal. What's it like? Ali asked, breaking Freddy out of her thoughts. What's what like? The aisle. Ali elaborated, and Freddy nodded. It wasn't out of place to field questions like that from the AKs. I mean, Mal and Uma have told me some, but I think they sanitised it a tad. Yeah, no duh. Freddy thought. You really think we want to remember the crap we lived through? Not to mention telling you will just make you feel guilty since you can't reverse time and make it as though it never happened. It was weird, but the last thing Freddy wanted to do was make Ali, of all people, feel bad about how the Isle kids grew up. Maybe it was the brutal honesty the Brit was trying. Maybe it was how she seemed genuinely curious, rather than just pretending to take an interest. Or maybe it was the way her lips seemed to form a rather cute pout whenever she was upset that still managed to find a way to drive a knife into Freddy's heart. Wait, what? Freddy thought. I mean, she is cute and her pout manages to send shivers down my spine. Her laugh drives away any clouds that are darkening my day. She's always on my mind, one way or another. Oh, God, I think I like her! Actually like her! I mean, normally on the aisle we just do a fling, but we're not on the aisle anymore and Ali deserves more than a fling. Before she could finish her thought, Ali's lips had found their way onto hers in a tender yet passionate kiss. Freddy's eyes widened in shock before closing as she kissed her back. She was surprised that Ali had initiated the first kiss, but at the same time she was also grateful that Ali had kissed her rather than the other way around. She knew that if it had been up to her, there'd always be a tiny voice in her head saying that she was making a mistake. Sorry, it's just... You look like you had a lot on your mind, Ali said as she broke from the kiss. And your first thought was to kiss me? Freddy asked. It worked, didn't it? Whatever was plaguing you isn't anymore. I can see it in your eyes. Ali told her. Yeah, you're totally right about that. Freddy thought as her lips still tingled from the kiss. Ali was going to be on her mind for the rest of the day, if not week. Hold up, Freddy said. So that kiss... 
It didn't mean anything? It can mean whatever you want it to mean, Ali said. For example, if you wanted it to mean I like you and that's really no one at the Enchanted Lake was just a ploy to get you to go out with me, you could have it mean that. What was that? I think you know what I said, Ali said with a small smile that almost didn't fit her face. The Enchanted Lake's ours for the taking. Harry and Uma are sparring in the gym, Ben's with Mal working on wedding prep, Evie and Doug are still working on helping Quill and Ginny with their respective businesses, Jane's helping Carlos with vet school applications, Lonnie and Jay are off at college, and Gil's with Macaria. What about Haddie? He's with CJ, Ryan, Herky and Brooke. Oh, and Alexandria, of course. Did you arrange this? Who? Me? I would never... Ali said with a small smile that seemed innocent, but didn't fall Freddy in the slightest. That being said, I think you're sweet and nice and someone I'd like to go out with. So, Enchanted Lake? Freddy chuckled as she shook her head. With a request like that, how could I say no? Oh, excellent! Ali grinned as they both got off the bed, making their way out of the room. Meanwhile, on the other side of the kingdom, Claudine sat down next to Henry on their sofa. It had been a week since the christening, and she'd only just gotten over the shock of her gift from the good fairies. Not that she didn't like it, but she hadn't expected it at all. She was a grown adult. Christenings were for new royals. Though, she was technically a new royal, now that she thought about it. She and Henry both were, since she was a princess through Aurora and Philip adopting her, which would make Henry a prince. Neither one of them wanted to lay claim to the title, preferring to live in their lighthouse and help Eric and Ariel. But the title was there for their kids if they would ever need it. Hey, Henry said, his gentle voice breaking Claudine out of her thoughts. Are you okay? You've been a little down all week. Oh, I'm okay, Claudine told him. I just... I was just thinking about the gift the good fairies gave me. How they took away the issues the Isle Diet gave me. What do you mean? Henry asked. Claudine sighed. Henry, if we want, having kids won't be an issue for us. The good fairies made sure of that. Oh. Oh. So you're... No, no, I don't think they could just make someone pregnant. But if we wanted to move forward physically... There wouldn't be that fear of not being able to become pregnant. Henry sighed, and Claudine gently grabbed his hand, linking her fingers through his. I know moving forward physically makes you uncomfortable, and I'm happy to move at your speed, she told him. No matter what, this marriage is a partnership. I didn't want to tell you to pressure you, but to let you know that the option is there for us now. I know, Henry said, nodding. And I appreciate that, Claudine. It's just... You know how my dad didn't come to our wedding? And how, in all honesty, I'm not really talking to him? Uh-huh. Claudine nodded, as she gently brushed some of Henry's red hair out of his eyes. She wasn't sure where Henry was going with this. But if he wanted to tell her, she would listen. Henry let out a small sigh before continuing to speak. I was... I was a fling for food baby, so to speak. My mum had a fling with my dad, but when she went to him for help, he told he told her that there wasn't any proof that I was his. She raised me on her own, did things no woman or person, for that matter, should have to do to make sure I ate and had a roof over my head when I was younger. All because he didn't want to own up to it. Watching her struggle... I swore to myself I would never put a girl in of that position. My donor put her in. Whenever the crew started talking about their flings, I'd just walk away. Not because I wanted to be a buzzkill, but because I couldn't help but think of those girls or women as my mum. When we were keeping us a secret, it, it was easier not to fully commit to a physical relationship since it was so dangerous if you got pregnant. Hey, hey, 
Claudine said and gently wrapped her hand around his. Henry, honey, you know I have no issue with how our relationship is, even if I didn't truly know your reasons before. Thank you for trusting me enough to tell me now. What your mother went through was horrible. And I've said this before, but I'll say it again. If more guys on the aisle had thought like you, well, the girls would have been a lot happier. I didn't tell you because I wanted you to move forward. I told you because you're my husband, and I thought you should know. Henry nodded, pulling her close to him and kissing the top of her head. There's a war in my head right now. One side is saying that if we don't move forward and have a kid now, we'll miss our window because, honestly, having a little girl run around here would be the only thing that would make it perfect. You want to go? Claudine asked. Yeah, Henry nodded. I'd rather not risk turning out like my donor. And, I don't know, teaching my daughter how to use a sword? What else could be better? Claudine smiled as she rested her head on Henry's shoulder. I'd want a girl too. I mean, I'd be happy with either. But boys in my family don't have the best track record. Phil seems fine, Henry said. You know who I mean, Claudine said with a small sigh. Henry nodded. I know. But, Claudine, you're forgetting something. Freddy's not here to potentially mould our kids into what he thinks is best. Think about Ari and Paige. Are they anything like Freddy? No, of course not. Then our potential son wouldn't be either, he told her. And I don't know if I can ever truly shake the voice in my head. This is I'm throwing away all my mom's sacrificed if I move forward into a physical relationship. But I'm willing to try. You are? Claudine asked in shock. I'm not leaving you, Claudine. Henry promised. No matter what, you're my world. You were my son before I got to be in it. And now Oridon gave us the gift of possibly increasing our family. If you want it, I'm willing to try. Claudine smiled as she heard that and gently placed her lips on his. We've got some time before Ryan comes back from his get-together with CJ, Hattie, Herky, Brooke and Alexandria. She murmured against his lips. Well, the last thing we want to do is scar him. He chuckled as her fingers left his hand and began to run through his hair. You tell me when you get uncomfortable and we'll stop, she promised as they got up off the sofa. We've got all the time we want. There's no need to rush. I know, and I will. Tell you, that is. Henry said as he kissed her trailing his lips down her neck with every pause in his sentence. Claudine smiled as the two of them made their way up the stairs to their room. Henry picking her up as to avoid the possibility of Claudine getting injured. Hey, I'm back! Ryan called just as Henry's door closed. Ryan heard that. He paused and then shook his head. And I'm leaving again. Have fun, you two, though Derek and Dustin are going to flip when they realise they missed this moment. He turned on his heel and closed the door. Henry and Claudine never aware that he'd been there, as they were content with their own private bliss. End of chapter. Hi guys, hope you enjoyed that one. I like that one, I really do. Freddy, Priscilla and Ali are cute together. Ali being very bold, I appreciate that move. Very well done, I approve one dying girl. And of course, Henry telling Claudine about his mother's history and why it's so hard for him to be physical with her. Oh my god, that is that is incredible. Ginny, I'll say it once, I'll say it again. You are amazing. You really are, okay? Anyway, you guys know the drill. Like, comment, and subscribe, and hit that bell to be notified for whenever I upload a new video. Have a good day, night, or whatever time zone you're in. Bye my guys, girls, and non-binary pals. I'll see you in another video. Take care.